Hello everyone, today we are talking about carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are everywhere in your food. And even you have diabetes or pre-diabetes, you want to know what your carbohydrates are. And as a diabetes doctor, I get this question all the time. Hey doctor, what are carbohydrates? Hey doctor, you know, how much of a carbohydrate I can eat? Hey doctor, which carbohydrates are the best? You know, hey doctor, can I eat carbohydrates at all? Well, from now on, after watching this video, after watching it entirely, you will be a pro. And I'm going to make sure that you get it. And you can repeatedly watch that, or you can actually go back and watch the parts that you want to watch. But once you master this video, you're going to be so much more comfortable with your diabetes management because you are going to know exactly what you're doing, what you're eating, and how food is affecting you, or it will affect you. So you will be able to have the power to manage your diabetes in a much more efficient way. Now, today we are going to go over everything, everything in your diet. How to understand what a carb is, how much carb you should be eating, and how do you determine how much carb you're eating per item, and how is that going to affect your blood sugar. So, that is very important because most of the time people either don't know what the carb is, or if they know what the carb is, they don't know how much carb is in per serving, and they will also miscalculate a lot. But I'm going to make it easy for you, so I'm going to go over that one by one today. And that's the first, we are talking about the starch, like starchy starch, like the carbs, the typical carbs, like the grains and stuff. And then I'm going to move on to fruits and stuff like that in the video. So make sure you stay until the end of this video, and I want you to use this video as a reference for yourself. So every time you have a question, you can go to that section. If I'm talking about these like bread type of stuff, you know, you're, you're concerned about that, you go to that part of the video. If you're concerned about the fruit, and you want to find about the fruits and carbs you can go to that section of the video and I'm gonna create a content section for you in the description below as well and so the video will be organized so let's get started so the starches we are going to look at the one star choice so when we talk about one star choice we are talking about 15 grams of carbs okay so not pounds not kilograms it's grams it's universal in every food label you're gonna see grams so, the food type, basically, I'm going to tell you here in the serving size. Now, the serving size, basically, we are thinking about 15 grams. So, everything here on this section is 15 grams. Okay, now, you're going to be saying, oh, okay, well, should I eat 15 grams only? Well, that depends on the individual, right? So, some of you will be needing only 15 to 30 grams per meal, which is very little. And some of you may need 45, even up to 75 grams of carbs, depending on how athletic and how active you are. So, the less active you are the less carbs you're gonna need of course so but a rule of thumb is a female I would say 30 grams of carbs per meal is a conservative approach and a 45 to 60 for a man uh, is a conservative approach now you can go lower or higher than that depending on your diabetes control and your activity level but what is more important is for you to know how much carb you are really getting into your system even if you do not have diabetes knowing this and practicing in your daily life will help you maintain your weight in a lot easier so let's move on now the bagel is something that i don't recommend eating but you know but it's sometimes you guys will do that so and uh and then how much bagel you know how many carbs is in there if you look at this one fourth of a large bagel that is 15 grams so what does it tell you the full bagel is actually 60 grams so there you go if you're having 60 grams of bagel now remember bagel itself is 60 grams the stuff that you put on there can add on more and we talk about this sometimes also the fat content of the food also changes the effect of the carbs so a bagel by itself like a toasted bagel uh, versus a bagel with a bunch of butter on it is going to change your blood sugar calculation. So you're gonna have much more blood sugar spike if you butter that bagel. Just keep in mind, Ron, maybe up to 50, 60% or more can spike your blood sugar if you add butter on top of the bagel. Now, biscuits are already fully loaded with butter, so you also have to keep that in mind. So you may say, okay, I had a biscuit. I'm from Alabama, Mississippi, Florida. You know, we love biscuits down here. Now, half a biscuit, for example, uh, is going to be 15 grams of carbs. So that's a whole biscuit is going to be 30 grams. But I can tell you that the 30 grams of this biscuit is going to be way more influential in terms of spiking your blood sugar than the 30 grams. Like for example, half a, half a bagel is 30 grams and then the full biscuit will be 30 grams. But they're not going to be head to head in terms of spiking your blood sugar. But still, 
you need to know how much carbohydrate you're ingesting. So half a biscuit is giving you 15 grams of carbs, whereas only one fourth of a bagel is giving you 15 grams. Also, the size of the biscuit matters. I mean, you may be making it at home, you may be making like a, like, a, like a little tiny one, or you may be making a big one. I'm talking about the standard biscuit that you find in the stores, you know, like frozen ones that you bake at home, etc. But you may go to a restaurant, you know, you live in Alabama or Texas, and everything is huge. You know, they may come up with a, a, a biscuit my head size, you know, then that's not the that's I'm talking about okay now the loaf type bread you know one slice that is the most common because a lot of people do sandwiches right so when you do a sandwich a regular thickness and thickness depends on the slice and the loaf of the bread as well but most of the time one slice will be 15 grams so if you're doing a turkey sandwich that is around 30 grams because you need two slices to make a sandwich right so Pita bread, you know, a lot of Middle Easterners, you know, or people who love Middle East food, they will end up with the pita bread and half a pita six inches across. Now, you're gonna be like, what is a six inch across? So this is a six inches across, okay? So I'm gonna make a comparison, okay, that's my hand. I have a small hand, so you may have, uh, you know, I, my hands are like almost like a girl hand, so. But if you're a big guy, that's probably gonna be, you know, half of your hand. So I'm telling you, this is six inches, not that big, but that's your pita. So, but most pitas are around this size, so I don't think you're gonna have to worry about that too much. So half a pita is 15 grams. So if you're having a whole pita, you are getting 30 grams of carbs just from the pita. Now, flour tortilla, one small tortilla is around six inches again, the same size, around this size, okay, here you go. Again, my hand, here. So that is your 15 grams as well. English muffin, half of an English muffin is 15 grams. Again, the full makes it a 30 grams. Hamburger bun, again, half a bun is 15 grams. Pancakes, one pancake is four inches across. Now, don't start writing mean comments saying that this doctor wants you to eat uh, pancakes. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just trying to educate you here, telling you that if you have a pancake, one pancake will give you 15 grams. So if you stack them around, you may end up with 60, 80, 120, as much as you want, and end up with a coma. Not that I recommend, but if, just so you know, if you're having a pancake, one pancake will give you 15 grams of carbs. The waffle. Uh, again, these are, I'm talking about four inches, by the way. So, this is four inches, okay? Again, look at this, my palm here, okay? This is four inches. This is really not much. So, this is like probably a quarter of what you get in a restaurant. So, again, uh, when, when I say one pancake, the restaurant pancakes is probably going to be four times bigger than this. So, you, you may end up with almost 60 grams of carbs, which is one pancake. And I'm not even talking about this, the syrup and stuff that you, and the butter and you put on there. You can affect your blood sugar dramatically when you add on those things. So again, this is four inch. You can compare this to what you're eating at home. Again, the waffle, four inches, 15 grams. Uh, at a restaurant, you will easily get four times this. And again, you can see the thickness here and the total size. So if this is 15 grams, if you're having four times this, you're getting 60 grams. So again, the plain roll, you know, one small roll will give you 15 grams. So let's move on to the next section, guys. All right, so let's move on to the cereals and grains. And you're gonna be like, I don't eat cereals and grains. Well, good for you, but some, a lot of you still do. So if you do, here's how it goes. So cereals, including sugar-coated cereals, shredded wheat, bran cereal, cooked cereal, grits, all of them, considering that they're all cooked, you know, half a cup of that is going to be your 15 grams. So what's a half a cup? So here's your half a cup. Okay, closer. Closer, closer, closer. That's your half a cup. It looks pretty small, huh? Look pretty small. But that's what it is. Now, grains are actually worse because the less you're getting, one third of a cup for 15 grams. So with these grains, you can look at rice, brown or brown, quinoa, couscous, barley, pasta. They're all shapes and sizes. You know, of course, if they're whole wheat and stuff like that, it's gonna spike your blood sugar less, which we talk about this glycemic index story in other videos that I'm not gonna dive too deep in those today. But one third of a cup, which is just this. So compare this to that. So this is half a cup. This is one third of a cup. Again, you can see, you know, these measuring tools are very good. You're gonna realize once you start putting that on your plate, actually, you're gonna be able to have this visualization of what is a half a cup and what is one third of a cup. 
And once you make yourself get used to not eating too much, actually it's not these foods mistake. You know, a lot of times, you know, people will blame the foods for their high blood sugars, but most of the time, it is our mistake that we are not exercising to burn them off and or we are eating way too much of it just for the fun of it and we end up spiking or having high blood sugars so but if you uh, want to stay away from them perfect if you cannot stay away from them that is how you measure them so what about the vegetables uh, well we have starchy vegetables and the non-starchy vegetables i'm going to talk about the starchy vegetables first because the non-starchy vegetables you know we have more leeway so uh with the starchy vegetables so if you look at this table here uh, you will see some of them are half a cup size will be 15 grams and some of them will be just one fourth will be only 15 grams so uh, let's talk about this like the corn for example half a cup of cooked corn will be 15 grams so if you're having the full cup so this is your half a cup again see so that's your half a cup of corn is 15 grams same thing for green peas half a cup of is 15 grams the baked potato I mean, one fourth of a large potato is going to be 15 grams. So that means that if you have a large potato, the whole potato is going to be 60 grams. So think about that when you're eating potato. Mashed potato, again, half a cup will be 15 grams. Sweet potato is the same way. Although, yes, sweet potato can spike your blood sugar slower, but still the carbs, the total amount of carbs is equal. Half a cup is around 15 grams. Now, butternut squash is better because you can have a whole cup of butternut squash for only 15 carbs or 15 grams of carbs. Acorn squash is the same way and the plantain is one third of a cup. Again, plantains are not your best friend. Again, one third of a cup is 15 grams, which is right here, 15 grams, one third of a cup of plantain. So I don't really know anybody who eats that little. So either don't eat it or if you're eating, you know how much carbs you're getting, but that's what it is, guys. All right, guys, so let's talk about the beans, lentils, and legumes, and all that stuff that you guys like, right? So the baked beans, canned, well, I don't like the canned stuff, right? The canned stuff is generally has a lot of preservatives and salt and stuff like that. But just in case you end up with it, one third of a cup will be 15 grams of carbs. Now, when you look at the beans overall here, the, the black one, the kidney beans, the pinto beans, white beans, the lima beans, either cooked or canned, half a cup of them will be 15 grams. Well, which is not bad. Again, remember, this is your this is your half a cup here, okay? And half a cup is 15 grams, a full cup is 30 grams. So if you're using this as, a, as your carb source, and these are high in fiber and protein, so it's going to allow your body to absorb it slower, so it's not gonna spike your blood sugar as fast. So these are good carbohydrate sources. Half a cup is only 15 grams. Lentils is my favorite. Again, any color, I love the red lentils, but the brown lentils, green lentils, Lentils are all good. Again, half a cup of cooked lentils will be around 15 grams. I would recommend, I highly recommend adding lentils to your diet if you have not already done so. The peas, again, the black eyed or split beans are half a cup is 15 grams. And refried beans, which I never had, but some people like it. So <laughs> half a cup of that is gonna be 15 grams as well. So that's that. So let's move on to the next one. Okay guys, so let's talk about the fruits. Okay, so the fruits. Well, again, serving size is we're talking about one serving size is 15 grams. The apples are one small apple. One small apple is 15 grams. What does it mean? A medium apple is 30 grams, a large apple is 45. So just keep that in mind. All the apples are very good, but if you go for a really big apple, you're looking for a lot of carbs. So don't complain if your blood sugar goes up because you ate an apple that is huge. Now, apricots, fresh apricots, again, four apricots, four to five apricots, depending on the size, is equal to an apple, so it's 15 grams. So apricots are not bad at all. The banana, again, you, if you're going for a very, very small banana, you know, that's gonna be 15 grams. But most bananas that we have, in the United States at least, I will say, it will be around 25 to 30 grams. So most of the time, I mean, if you're eating like a four ounce or four inch piece, that is, you know, half of a moderate size uh, banana would be 15 grams. So if you're gonna eat banana, probably half a banana will be enough for that 15 grams. So the blackberries are full of fiber, so one cup. So you can have, a, you know, the full cup of uh, blackberries and then three fourth cup of uh, blueberries as well. These are great because they're high in fiber, low in glycemic index, 
and they're great fruits and you can still have up to a cup of uh, those. The cantaloupe is one cup diced. Again, that's one cup is 15 grams. The cherries, if you are having 12 cherries, 12 like a normal size cherries, cherries will be around 15 grams as well. The figs are great because they're high in fiber. If you're having two medium sized figs, you're getting your 15 grams from that. The grapefruit, again, for the fresh one, a half of that will be 15 grams. If you're going for the full one, you're looking for 30 grams of carbs. And the grapes, grapes, you know, there are 17 small grapes or maybe 10 to 11 large grapes will give you 15 grams of carbs. So be conscious of that, how much grapes you're eating as well, because those tiny things can add up pretty quickly. But if you're counting your grapes, you'll still be in check around 15 grams of carb with 17 small grapes. When we look at the honeydew melon, one cup again, around 15 grams. Uh, the mangoes, uh, I have a lot of people getting into trouble in the summertime here in Florida because of the mangoes. Again, half a small mango. Half of a small mango is 15 grams. So most of the time the mangoes we have are dead huge. You know, they're probably gonna be around 60 grams. They're nice and juicy, but they can definitely be very carby. The nectarines, you know, uh, thank you for uh, watching these guys. Recently, the nectarine, the peach video we had, the one medium nectarine is around 15 grams, or the, the peach around the same as well. The oranges are high in fiber. Again, one medium orange, six and a half oz, for example, is going to be 15 grams. The papaya, half a papaya, this is like an eight ounce or one cup, will be 15 grams for you. Uh, we talked about the peaches, the pineapples, three-fourths of a cup, you know. So if you're seeing that you're allowed to have less amount per cup for the 15 grams of serving, you know that there's more carb, they're more loaded. So pineapple is three-fourths of a cup is 15 grams. The plums, the fresh plums, two fresh plums can put you at 15 grams. So raspberries are full of fiber, great. You can have up to one full cup with only just 15 grams of carbs. Strawberries are again full of fiber. You can even have more than one cup of strawberries for just 15 grams of carbs. And the watermelon again, watermelon is full of water. So uh, although they can be sweet, you can still have a little bit over one cup and only have 15 grams of carbs. Okay, so how about the dairy products? So I know some of you are not a big fan of dairy products, but again, I think they're overall healthy full fat or no fat depending on your caloric needs and your appetite, your desire, your taste buds or whatever. But here is the deal. The yogurt, plain yogurt. I always recommend plain yogurt. You don't want to get into those flavored yogurts and bunch of added sugars. So two thirds of a cup is going to give you around 12 grams. Now, since one cup of milk is around 12 grams, one choice of dairy products is typically around 12 grams of carbs. Now remember, we have been talking about one choice of a carb uh, or one serving is typically 15 grams for pretty much everything else. But when it comes to dairy, it is 12 grams of carbs for one exchange, for one serving, whatever you call it. So one cup of milk, 2%, 1%, doesn't matter. The, the fat content can change, but the milk is milk. One cup is around 12 grams. When it comes to yogurt, two-thirds of a cup, since it's denser, uh, you're going to get less with the yogurt. Uh, two-thirds of a cup is going to be 15 grams. Now, when it comes to almond milk, again, same thing. One cup is around 12 grams. Now, you're, when you're getting fat, just remember that, you know, the fat will add to your calories and can also affect the blood sugar response as well. And the coconut milk is the same way. One cup is around 12 grams of carbs. So, again, these are not prohibited items as long as you know how much carbs you're getting in and you're not multiplying, adding a bunch of carbs together. But that's what it is for the dairy products. Okay, now the fun part, everybody's favorite, the vegetables, yeah. Well, non-starchy veggies we're going to talk about right now. And the cool part of the non-starchy veggies are they're very low in carb. One choice of these are only 5 grams. So, again, we talked about the 15 gram choice for like regular carby stuff. We talked about uh, one choice being 12 grams for the dairy stuff. Now we're talking about the veggies that are 5 grams only per choice. So, uh, typically... We're talking about, when we say choice, one cup of raw vegetables or half a cup of cooked vegetables. Okay, so think about this. So all these vegetables that I'm going to read right now to you is, we're talking about only five grams of carbs for one cup raw and half a cup cooked. Now, 
I'll give you a quick tip before we move on. Now, if you eat your non-starchy, non-carby food, that includes your non-starchy vegetables, your protein, etc., and leave your carbohydrates for later before you're totally full, number one, you're not going to have too much of them because you're almost full. Number two, it's actually going to attenuate the rate of the spike in your blood sugar. So if you are going to have rice, for example, if you are going to have bread, for example, try to have that towards the end of the meal instead of the beginning of the meal. Alright, so what are these vegetables that are really good? Well, the asparagus, right? The beets, the broccoli, Brussels sprouts, the cabbage, the carrots, cauliflower, celery, cucumber, eggplant, green beans, kale, mushrooms, okra, peppers, leafy greens, tomato, turnips, and zucchini. So you might be having some of these veggies in your diet already, but consider getting a variety of these or trying to find different ways to cook and enjoy these things because if you incorporate more of these veggies in your diet, you're going to be able to control your diabetes a lot more easier. So I recently had a cauliflower steak in a restaurant and I loved it. I mean, that is amazing. I mean, if you hate cauliflower, you will start liking that if you just make it right. Now I'm going to tell you something though, I didn't order that cauliflower steak to order cauliflower. I thought it was like some sort of a steak, like I thought it was a real steak. And then it came out to be a cauliflower. Well, guess what? I ended up eating it. I said, I oh, okay, I like it. I didn't order another steak on top of my cauliflower. So I was happy with it. So it impressed me that, okay, well, cauliflower actually can be really good if you make it right.